Welcome back to One Take with Jeremy Green. That's me, and I'm the best. And this is my friend Carrie, and she agreed to come sit today so I could paint her. Let's see what we can do with this. Ready? Ready. Brace yourself. <laughs> okay. I'm really nervous right now. <gasps> what if it doesn't look like you? It probably won't, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, she knows. That's good. So I'm starting this with orange because I don't know why, but I just am. I really like painting the human figure. I just paint what I want to, when I want to. I'm traditional in the ways that I like to paint, and that's about it, so. <laughs> but I'm not traditional in the ways that I like to break the rules a lot when I paint, because painting normal is, has been done. Anyone can paint normal, so. I tried to think of new ways to do it, and. Then you just end up with some weird stuff, and there it is. <laughs> right? I've noticed, like, in some of your work, the contrasting colors yeah. that you use and, like, the layers of lines that just make it really pop and look three-dimensional. Uh, I love that. I like to work with line a lot because when I was in my intro to drawing course, the teacher asked us one day, What's more important, line or color? And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And so I really, I work a lot with color and I like to incorporate some weird line work in there too, just because why not? <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed too in, in some of your work, like the color blending looks like some traditional training in in that and how you work colors together. Like, you know, it can tell that you've had training. So where did you study art? Where did you take in classes? I started after high school up here in Summit County at Colorado Mountain College. I got my associates. And then I went and dilly-dallied and did whatever for some years. And then I was like, I should go back to school. So I went to Colorado State University. I was reading a book and it, someone was talking about photography in the work and how it, photographs are a lie because they're just an instant glimpse of something. Whereas, say, a painting is, it captures hours of the person and you can capture lots of personality and yeah, just, I just, I thought it was funny because I just, I have this whole thing with photography. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think painting is really good too at capturing a certain mood that it's like wherever the, the artist is at, you know, that day, it kind of captures that energy. Whereas in photography, it more captures the energy of the place of what you're photographing. Um, it seems with painting, it's a more direct expression of personality. It's real art. <laughs> <laughs> well, good photography is hard. Hold that smile. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you notice, like, cause she's not holding still. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my lines are all crazy. So <laughs> this painting, when we are done, it will capture He's crazy. So we're good, right? It's yeah, perfect. Yeah. It's you like perfect. That. Yeah, it's good, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Often when I do a face or a, so whatever, I just kind of just draw the lines of what I see, and it usually ends up looking like it a little bit. So that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she has two ears. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Because have they have one cover. ear because they usually forget to put the other ear on the picture. Oh, see what I'm saying? That makes sense. 
does it? <laughs> <laughs> the reason I started with orange is, you know, I've talked about it in the past, abstract realism, or just whatever we want. We're going to make her a Smurf. Yeah? <laughs> Smurf time. <laughs> How we're gonna do this is um, I'm gonna use different blues. We're just kinda gonna make it look like it's skin. You know, pretend I was using skin colors, but I'm not. I'm using blue. Yeah, it is interesting <laughs> how you have to be careful with the lines, cause they do, especially with like the blue and the orange, that turns to brown uh, immediately, yeah, so you yeah, have to be careful yeah, it's not to. kind of a brown, gray, it's blend them too much. nasty color, you know? Yeah, cause see, I got a little bit in here, and yeah, that's yep. cool, it looks good. <laughs> do you usually do a painting like in one sitting, or do you end up, you know, layering it and doing it over well, a I've, series of days? Usually it's in one sitting. I'll do I'll do one layer in one setting if you know what yeah. I mean. So. Yep. We met at the rec center. We were we were we were in the pool area. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. And we just kind of started talking and became instant friends. It was like yeah. instant. As soon as we started talking, it was like, oh my God, you're a kindred spirit. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was awesome because I could totally relate to the things that you were talking about. And you have a very creative and sensitive spirit, um, which I really oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> and I could just really relate to you very, very easily. All right. So you see what those colors mixing in there? Yeah, yeah. So I guess maybe we should clean the brush. <laughs> Slash of my turban juice all over the place, yeah. It's real nice too, cause it's got this little... Make a mess. Oh, nice. It's just got this little thing in oh, it. Cool. And the holes and the things, you know? Yeah. Woo and Kinda help clean it yep. a little better. And I keep getting the orange and the blue and it's just not working out. So I'm gonna... Hmm. It's kind of giving it like a shadow yeah. effect that's actually kind of cool. I mean, it's working. And then you got more of the pure blue that's kind of popping out. It's cool to be able to see it while you're doing it. And it's interesting with oil paints how some of them are transparent, like the aquamarine. Is, has a transparency to it, and then the like cobalt blue is matte, totally matte, and um, you can get some really different effects with the transparent and the opaque colors, which is kind of cool. Transparent white. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the white makes it, yeah. <laughs> no, I asked, okay. I asked the, um, the lady at the art miner in Denver, I was uh -huh. like, so, I've never used transparent white before. What's it do? She's like, well, if you have another transparent color with it and you mix it, you can make it transparent. I was like, ooh, oh. that might be fun. <laughs> yeah, so. I always think of the white as being an opaque color, so I didn't know that they actually have like an opaque white that'll keep that transparency but let you adjust the tone of the color. Noses are always the hardest for me. It's so hard to get noses to look right. Usually I'll start with the nose, it's because you know it's right in the middle. Right. Yep. <laughs> You're like, right? I can judge it based on that, where I'm going, so. Yep. This time I don't think I did start with the nose though, because I'm crazy, right? <laughs> I didn't think it started with like the hair and I was like, mm. So I'm, I'm using a different blue now, if you, I didn't say that or you can't tell, but um, yeah, just kind of, you know, balance the skin tones of the Smurf. <laughs> so Smurf it, yay. <laughs> It is interesting how you can get so many different features and shadows with really the same basic color, like how you're using the blue, yeah. but just a little bit 
of, sh of shadowing and blending, you can get a lot of different effects yeah. with that one color. I've been wanting to do a painting, or I've done a couple paintings at home with all just one color. But not one color, really. It's like different colors of that color. Of that it's, you color. know, it's, it's cyan blue, it's cerulean blue, it's cobalt blue, it's ultramarine French home blue, you know. <laughs> it's a good way to practice just trying to paint a whole painting with basically one color, yeah. but then working with the different tones and, um, and different lightness and darkness. That's a really good way just of practicing. And Did a painting for the, <laughs> of the CVS pharmacy at Target and they gave it to him and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. But it's kind of hard to see. And then I pointed it out to him. I was like, no, this is this, this is this. And they're like, oh, oh my God. So that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's always kind of been the thing with me. I have to, if I point out what's going mm -hmm. on in my work, people get it. Yep. But if I don't, then they're like, eh. <laughs> so I did an art workshop with the brain injury group. Everyone's look different, cool. which is what I want when I paint, because I don't want yeah. everyone to paint the same thing. So I actually, I did a demo, and then I turned my painting so they couldn't see it. I, did, I told them, I was like, I don't want everyone just to copy me. Right, you gotta find your, find your own groove yeah. with it. it so so I've, did, I've done so. a couple yeah. uh, painting workshops with you, and yeah. they were really fun. Yeah. Remember and that time came you came over and totally painted unexpected. on that big canvas? And yeah. I was like, I don't know what that we're going to do. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, and with that one, it was so big. You had to lay it on the floor so we could kind of come at it from different angles. But it was really, really big. That was really fun. This is a fun one. This is looking good. Colors are kind of blending and looking crazy. Yeah, the blending is actually working out really well. It's kind of creating the depth in it that's working. It creates those darker tones. And it's not that the yep. blue's darker or anything, it's just, you know. So what are some of your, your favorite artists or inspirations right now? Like, you know, there's the Impressionists, they're great. All of them. And like, Andy Warhol was kind of what cool. got me into art. It was like, oh, that's oh. cool, you can just do a face and put the colors in different spots, and that's yep. sweet. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I always talk about looking at your subject when you're painting it, but I never do, because <laughs> I'm in, I'll look until I have that just kind of outline on the thing, and then, yeah. you know, like, this is great. We're that talking, we're having a good time, right? Yep. yep. And like, I'm kind of using our conversation is kind of how the brush strokes are coming out now, like, because we're kind of being right. crazy and wild. and That's kind of what I mean about, like, getting the emotion of the moment yeah. can come out in a painting, so it's not exactly. about it's not having a photograph. it look. Yeah, it doesn't have to <laughs> look realistic at all. It's just more about capturing the energy. Because when I, when I, when they do paintings, I'm always kind of like, I'm, I'm, am I nervous? It's like, is it gonna turn out good? Uh, but it always does. So, because I'm the uh, best. <laughs> that's a really important thing with painting is to put the inner critic, the inner judge, off to the side. And, and not have it saying, oh, it needs to be this way, or am I doing this good enough, or... Stop you know, talking, you yeah, don't know what you're that, talking about, be quiet, yep, right? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it can really interfere and interrupt with the process instead of just being playful, having fun with it, and seeing what turns out. It's like it doesn't have to be for anyone or something that you're going to put in an art contest or, you know, that's like too yeah. much pressure yep. to put on oneself instead of just flowing with it. When, you wonder, when you're trying to do something, it doesn't turn out. But when you're not trying, 
it turns out. Yeah, totally. It's That's weird. absolutely how it works. <laughs> yeah, if you're trying too hard or, or overthinking it, it ends up looking chunky and contrived. And if you just can be playful and have fun with it, then it kind of lets the kind of energy of the universe come into it. And, uh, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no hair color. Yep, Smurfette's hair is <laughs> yellow. <laughs> Blonde, right? <Yep. laughs> Let's use this one. Oh, cool. Using a fan brush. I'm like Bob Ross. But I'm not Bob Ross. I'm Rob Boss. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> See, he only painted landscapes. I'm trying yep. to do something yep. different every time. That's all I've ever seen him do was yeah. landscapes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's dripping. Uh-oh. <sighs> That's OK. <laughs> Don't drip on the floor. So now these drips are just kind of happening and it's fun. It works right into it. Looks like a little strand. Yep. And do you usually thin your paint when you're like blending and stuff with turpentine or with some kind of medium? Well, like I use linseed like, oil or something. I use both. So, yeah. or I won't use anything at all. I kind of like I painted like that for years, or I didn't yeah. use anything. Just and you know, you run paint. through your paints a lot quicker that way. So. Like, I like using fan brushes that way, too, because you can just get some really nice lines going sideways, but then you can turn it as you're going, going down. So you can get a lot of different effects with a fan brush. Oh, we're going to get some like green that. hair. Yeah, we, we were talking about that. Uh, we met at the rec center. We were just, like, in the pool area. We ended up talking, and I was like, wow, you we were, were in the hot tub. kindred spirit. <laughs> And we just, our Carrie's a great friend and, you know, she's smart and we like to hang out and talk crazy stuff, so, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is cool, the way that's turning out. I missed awesome. the spot. Oops. Might needs more yellow. I almost didn't bring yellow. I was like, I'm just bringing orange and blue. And then I was like, eh. Better throw some red and yellow in there just in case. Yeah, the yellow actually with the orange gives it a real three-dimensional, which looks really cool. There goes that drip. Bye, drip. Smell you Bye later. <laughs> oh, we didn't use that blue. Oops. It's so red. That's a cool shade of red. It's like a, a maroon. A lizard, no, it's a lizarine green. Oh, okay. And white. Pupils. You have pupils, I think. It's like Fremen blue eyes. <laughs> and oh. then... Oh, you have eyelashes, too. Uh -huh. Nice. That's cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if you were going to we'll do call like this a, a background, a right? Outline yeah. on it. Even with something that is a little more realistic, if you give just a little bit of a black line around it, it makes it look more three dimensional. Sure. It kind of tricks the eye and makes it pop out. It's all about trickery. It really is, because you know you're trying to get a three dimensional effect with a two-dimensional space. Uh -huh. So it's all about, yeah, getting those illusions of dimension. Yeah, I sold my last painting from the last show with the googly eyes. Sold it to the uh, Amber in the back with the cameras. We were friends Zephyr, and Zephyr loved it so much. She was like, we should do an art show in my house. And I was like, cool, let's do that. Cool. At our group the other day in Edwards, and. I was giving the uh, the guy Steve. I was giving him all kinds of all kinds of flag, and it was a good time. We had a great time. <laughs> so.
I was just doing a painting class, and we were just we painted sunflowers for the nice. brain injury support group nice. in Edward. And yeah, we had a great time. This show, I want to send it out. It's for uh, I want to. It's for Steve. Oh. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Steve <laughs> is a. Uh, He's the guy in the support group. I think he's in charge, kind of, so. Oh, nice. He's a very nice guy, so. They do really cool things. He's like, he said he's watched all my videos, and he's kind of my new biggest fan, and I was like, sweet. That was cool. So, I have fans. (laughs) I have fans. That's pretty cool. (laughs) These little tiny brushes don't hold that much paint, so you gotta Yeah, remember. I noticed that, that you kind of load the brush up with paint yeah. so that it lasts a little bit longer. It is hard with a smaller brush. It just runs out really quick. Yeah, it was really nice when the, um, the TBI support group did the sound healing. That was really nice. Oh, it wasn't that? That, that was, was fun. fun. That was a fun event, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Love sound healings. I see a couple white spots in it, so I'm just kind of going to touch those up with some black to kind of tie it into the outside line, and then we're going to call it Smurfette. That's often the hardest part of a painting is when you're, like, at the end, but trying to figure out what does it need to just finish it. That's a really challenging part of a painting. I'm taking the black from the line, and I'm putting it in the white spaces that I kind of missed in the face to tie it all together. Yep, and for little accents. Oh, maybe. <laughs> There's a spot. There's a spot. Da-da! Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. You're a beautiful <laughs> smurfette. Very <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> Maybe yeah, we'll good job. We'll have you on again, probably. Yeah. I don't really want to use anyone Thank else. So. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Tune in next time and we'll do something crazy. All right? <laughs> cool.